function so in this program uh, earlier what we have done is earlier we have done uh, gradient descent okay gradient descent and it was not only uh, not only just gradient descent it was a batch gradient descent in which, uh, it means that i was taking the whole data at a single time to train our data but there are different kind of gradient descent so there are uh, like mini batch gradient descent in which what you do if you have this whole data what you are going to do is first of all you are going to take this part this data a batch of uh, your data then you are going to train your machine learning algorithm on that then you are going to take the next part then you are going to train your data on that so in this uh, part i am going to do this so let me just quickly do that and i'm going to use the fit function here so i'm i can give self x i can give y uh, i want the uh, batch size i want the batch size as 100 and learning is 0 0.001 and yeah epochs uh, the number of epochs that we need let's suppose we need 100 epochs okay so we have our learning we have our epochs and we have our batch size so we have 400 total examples as we have done here as we have given here so what we are going to do we are going to first take 100 uh, values from the, that and then we are going to update the values for on that so that this is part is pretty uh, useful i don't know whether you know this right now or not but um, um, a mini batch gradient descent and squaristic gradient descent works better if we talk about the convergence so they work better and i will make a dedicated video to show how uh, or which gradient descent is the best for which case so uh, for that i am going to create a new video so num let's take number of features the features that we have features uh, x dot shape one and number of samples is going to be x dot shape zero now n is going to be our learning learning also c is going to be your self dot c and we are going to take id so that is going to be np dot a range in this i am going to give number of samples so what i am doing here is let's suppose we have 400 number of sample so it is creating a range from this and what it is going to do it id will have now one to four hundred numbers okay so we are creating id you will see the use of for them in the next part okay so that is n np dot random dot shuffle ids so what we are doing is let's suppose we have this 400 data so we are shuffling them because sometimes it happens that it might overfit if you do not shuffle so it is good to shuffle okay so now what i'm going to do is uh, i'm going to make the w which is weights uh, as zero and we dot zeros zeros and i need the i need one row and one row and number of features so i need one row and two columns because we have two number of features okay and i also need the bias as zero okay and the losses is going to be right now this so let's take the loop for i in range epochs okay and i'm going to find the loop so l is going to be self dot self dot hinge loss and in this i'm going to give w uh, w bias and x and y so this is going to give me the loop based on the uh, not the loop but the loss on the basis of the weight and the biases so that is going to be the loss and now let's losses dot append l 
Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to go through all the batch. So for batch underscore start in range zero, zero to number of samples, number, number of samples and we will have batch underscore site. So as we have done here, we have taken the batch size as 100. Okay, we have taken the batch size as 100 uh, and number of samples are 400. So what it is going to do, first of all, batch will have zero. Then in the next loop, batch will have 100, then it will have 200 and then it will have 300. So this is how it is going to work. Okay, uh, it is easy, I guess you know how a for loop works. So this is what we are going to do now. In this, what I'm going to do is grad W is going to be zero and grad bias is going to be zero. So as I said earlier that we will have, let's suppose we have this data. So first of all, we are going to update our weight and bias on the basis of this part. After that, our gradient will become zero as we have done here then it will what it will do it will do it will take this part then it is going to update our theta and uh, not the theta but the weight and bias using this part and so on so now let's do this wait a second yeah so what i'm going to do is i'm also going to take another loop for j in range uh, i will just tell you what uh, this range or what this for loop is for so batch batch start and batch start plus batch size so what i am doing here i am saying okay we have this data in this we have taken this first batch and now what we are going to do is we are going to take every value of this batch to update our gradient on w and gradient bias and then we will add them and you will see what will happen in x but what i am doing here is i am uh, going to uh, take care of all of this so if j is less than number of samples it means that um, um, we have crossed 400 sam uh, 400 point okay so what i'm going to do x is equal to id s j so as we have uh, sampled the ids so this is what it is going to do it is going to take random values now okay and it is going to be ti uh, ti T, um, what is the formula for the ti ti is nothing but y x because yeah so this is the our point that we want to take so this is going to be y x and it is going to be multiplied with just like here So this is going to be like this. Now we will have our ti like this and what I am going to do if ti is greater than 1. So what it is going to do it is going to increase nothing. So grad w plus equal to 0 and grad b plus equal to 0. Else else it is going to be grad w is plus equal to c times y x y x times x x and grad b is going to be c times y x yeah so let me explain what it is going here first of all what are these values how did we get this value so this is nothing but this is the differentiation of this this 
this result is the differentiation of this with respect to uh, our w and this uh, not this but this this is the differentiation of this uh, this equation with respect to bias so if you will solve this then you can you will get this uh, differences and guys i am not going into detail of this much because i have already explained all of this uh, like how gradient work how you can find the um, uh, you know differentiation or how that differentiation is going to update it i have uh, talked about all of this so that's why i'm not going in detail in this video okay so what it is uh, let me just write the code and then i will explain it to you so this is going to be W is going to be W minus N into W plus N into red W and bias is going to be bias plus N into red yeah so this is going to be our bias and then let's do this This is going to be self dot w is going to be w and self dot bi uh, bias is going to be bias and now I'm going to return w bias and closes. So let me tell you what is happening here. Okay. So first of all, we are going to take the first batch. That is, uh, let's suppose we are taking the first hundred examples. Okay. Now, uh, for that we are taking grad zero and uh, grad w and grad b as zero. Now, in this uh, hundred examples, what we are doing is we are uh, taking each and every value one by one. So we are going through those hundred examples now. Okay, and we have also shuffled them randomly. So we are going to get the data randomly okay now yeah so as it is uh, showing uh, uh, so what we have to do is we have to find the ti for our differentiation and what we are saying here is if ti is greater than 1 so let's suppose ti is 2 okay let's suppose ti is 2 so ti is going to be 1 minus 2 that is going to be minus 1 so in this case 0 is bigger so that's why we have added 0 okay and let's suppose if and also red b also is going to be 0 okay and let's suppose if ti is less than 1 so let's suppose ti is 0 0.8 so it is going to be 0 0.2 so now it is going to choose 0 0.2 instead of 0 so that's why we have uh, done c times yx and xx this is the uh, differentiation that we are going to get if we will put uh, ti value ti values here and this is what we are going to get also the uh, gradient for the bias is going to be normal uh, c into yx and now what we are going to do uh, as we will go through all those examples we are going to add like this we are going to add ev in every example for that and after 100 examples what we are going to do we are going to update our basis um, uh, update our weights so what we have done here weight is equal to weight minus n into weight so why uh, have we done this because uh, when we are going to find the gradient for this now then it is not just going to release this value what it is also going to release it is also going to have uh, if you are doing uh, uh, differentiation for this then it will have uh, the output as w so that's why i am doing like this so that's why i am doing li it like this so this uh, what i am doing here is uh, the weights minus n into weights plus me uh, plus n into gr gradient of weight on um, which is this so basically this is a this is the same part okay 
and if you will see in bias we have not done this because in bias this term is going to be zero so we have not calculated that in bias okay i think that it is a little bit confusing but if you will just write it down and try to solve what values are going where so you will get the idea very easily now what we are uh, what we have done here is after every 100 values we have updated the weight and bias and then we again found uh, started finding that and we have done that for 100 epochs so this is what we have done now our code is complete